we have the senator representing the area in the National Assembly, Senator Kola Balogun. He joins us from Abuja City. Thank you, distinguished senator, for joining us tonight. And here in our Lagos studio. Thank you, Shil. Thank you, Senator. And here in the studio is a security expert and the former director of the Department of State Services to DSS, Mr. Dennis Amakure. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you again on the Thank program. Thank you for having me. Let's uh, speak to Senator and give us a sense of what is happening. We hope and we believe, I mean, we pray that this kind of thing will not reoccur, but it's happening again. Southwest governors have condemned these attack and these killings. The same way a lot of people condemned it, but it's happening again. Give us a sense of what exactly happened and what is happening. And we are hearing also there are warnings for people to leave that community. Okay, it seems uh, we'll get our engineers. We'll get our engineers to fix that in a moment. But let me ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Mercury, for what happened in Benue State, the governor has always talked about this, um, and we're hearing now. Uh, the situation where the community say they are helpless in what has happened. What do you make of what is happening in Benue State, for example? Well, I think, um, in fact, uh, thank you for having me. Um, there is an important thing. What is happening in Benue State is what is happening in other parts of the country. You know, the killing and the letting of blood, you know, is just getting out of hand. And I think I will say that let us stop this bloodletting. Because I think there is enough people that have died in this country. Do we know these people that are killing people? I think they should be known by now. Because, you see, um, when um, we started hearing these unknown gunmen, unknown gunmen, and uh, some of them had been arrested. Before, they used to kill all of them when they uh, have interaction with the police. Uh, but uh, I think uh, a couple of days, they've arrested a couple of them. So they should interrogate them and tell us who they are, where they come from, you know, and then uh, take up the investigation from there. Because if you look at what happened in Igogo and look at what happened in these Agatu community, yes. it looks similar. Mm -hmm. They come surreptitiously yeah. in, the, uh, in the cover of, the, uh, of night. They come attack and they go. And one of the uh, stories that we heard from the natives in Igogo, for example, is that they came on motorbikes and they come into those communities, they attack and go. Why is it difficult to be able to know whether there are linkage between all of these uh, issues? Because that is one thing that uh, information that has eluded a lot of people. Well, we've heard about uh, foreign, foreign invaders that have come in in the uh, cover of uh, being herdsmen. And, uh, of course, these guys have gone around. We know their modus operandi. It's different from, uh, you know, uh, communal clashes. So uh, that modus operandi has showed itself in Benue State, showed itself in, uh, um, in Oyo State. And um, I think the security agencies by now must have a, a picture of uh, exactly who is doing this. And if we know them, you know, and if they are foreign, then why don't we try and get them out of this country? Because, you know, they are splitting our country to smithereens. You think that the security uh, operatives are overwhelmed? Well, I think they are too busy because they are very, you know, they occupy in many, many areas. There are too many battles right. going on at the same time. Let me get Senator to give us a sense of what is happening. This is, these are your constituents. These are your people. You know them. You know what is happening. Give us a sense, Senator, if you can hear me now, what exactly is happening. What baffles one or what is worrisome now is the fact that some people have been want to leave those community. Things have escalated, isn't it? Well, uh, Sharon, thank you for having me. Let me begin by saying that... Uh, or your state in particular. And of course, the entire Yoruba land have been one of the zones of this country that have been so accommodating to people from other parts of the country, regardless of their, uh, their tribe. And so when you wake up suddenly and wake up to see this kind of thing happening, especially in a place that's been peaceful, that's been accommodating to people from all parts of the country, 
at least uh, I know for a fact that uh, people from all parts of the country who live in Oyo State, some have contested elections into local government offices, though some have been appointed into statewide offices. That is to show that Oyo State, particularly Oyo State, is not a place where you will expect this kind of thing to happen. Well, now, now here, here we go. And we're having it not the first time, not the second time, and it keeps happening. So I think that uh, something uh, is happening in this country. I think that uh, our security architecture, as we have it now, is inadequate. I think we need to do a lot more, especially as a government. We need to do a lot more to tackle this security issue. Uh, yesterday, I was speaking with some people in my senatorial district, especially the youths. They are angry. They are frustrated. It's even difficult for some of us to tell them to keep their calm because they are frustrated. Even the issue of uh, self-determination agitation that you have everywhere, it's a function of a collective frustration as a people. This must not be happening. In Oyo State, we are devastated. People are angry. It is so, I'm heartbroken as I speak with you. It, it is just, it's just unbelievable. These people are savages, regardless of where they come from. And of course, the primary responsibility of any responsible government is to ensure security of life and property for the citizenry. And on this call, we have not done enough. And this is why we're having this problem. Each time you talk about the centralization of security architecture, some people get worried. I think it's about time we did that because uh, our, our army, the military is overwhelmed. And you know, the primary uh, core mandate of the military is really to ward off external aggression. But now we are actually putting them, uh, 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 using them for internal security, which is meant for police and other security, security agencies. So when we say let us decentralize, uh, decentralize our policing system, some people are comfortable with that. I think it's about time we did that. It's about time we did, let's devolve power to, to federating units. Let every local government, every state, take responsibility to, for security of lives and property of the citizens in that locality. I think that's when we begin to, uh, to have solution to th this problem. So we're heartbroken, we're, 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 we're angry, we're frustrated. It cannot continue like this. Uh, the other time, when the Southwest governors came together and came up with this Amatakon concept, again, some people are, are uncomfortable with that. And so far, we now know that Amatakon is working in collaboration with the police, with the, the SSS in this, at the state level. They are working together. And so if, if the, uh, the uh, government, Southwest government, is now requesting from the IG to encourage these uh, legal outfit, such as Amatekun, encourage them by, by, uh, by granting them the license to be well equipped, just like every other security. Since, since the, 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 the way they function, since their modus operandi is about cooperating and collaborating with other security agencies, I don't see why we should not do that. And of Senator, course, our intelligence mm -hmm. network is also, is also very poor. Let's take yes. a breather. Let's take a breather. But we would like to know because uh, on, on several uh, angles, your constituents are having this issue. On one angle, you have the custom issue that you have brought up on the floor of the Senate. On one angle, you have sp spoken about the security situation. But we are here, and I'd like you to clarify that for us, uh, where people are being told to leave the community. If that is true, We'd like you to give us details of what is happening exactly. We have Dennis Amakri also here, a former director of DSS. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. We dig deeper into what is happening in the Barakpa. Why and how will this be cut permanently? Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. It's the security of this country that gets us working tonight. My guest is Senator Kola Balogun, Senator uh, from Oyo State, where uh, his constituents uh, experienced some kind of attack on Sunday, and he's talking to us about that situation. Mr. Dennis Amakuri, a former director of the DSS, giving some um, expert opinion on what is happening and what we need to do as a people. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Before I get back to the Senator, 
I, I like Senate also to react to this. But you heard what the Northern Elders Firm said on, on that soundbite we played earlier in the program, where they're uh, uh, advising and encouraging some Northerners who are living in the southern part of the country who are uncomfortable or we are exposed to attacks to come back home. What's your take on that kind of statement? <laughs> uh, I, I, I just go ahead and remember 1967, 1966, 67, when there was this massive exodus from the north. You know, you heard about the last train from the north where many, many Southerners were, you know, some of them wounded, some dead bodies were transferred down to the south. And it was not quite one week after that train arrived, Enugu, that um, Colonel uh, Odumego Juku at that time declared the Republic of Biafra. Now, we are rewinding history whereby people are saying that, okay, if we're not going to be the same country again, then let people go back to where they come from. But is that really what we wanted? Because if I, you can see that the interdependency of Nigerians, that's why some people are saying that, you know, talking about the division of this country is a no-go area. You know, but at the same time, when you look at it and say, oh, okay, if we cannot live together, then that diversity, that unity in diversity has broken apart. So are we ready to do that or not? We have a legislator, uh, legisl uh, legislature, which is the first arm of government, you know, arm of government. That's why, in fact, when the senator was talking, I was with him myself, I was saying, well, they are the ones to start it because it is the legislature that will handle that constitution that changes whatever. The executive is just there to carry out the uh, order. So that statement is dangerous and it could spark... It could spiral. The statement, I think, is one that the security agencies should look into because you are indirectly telling Nigeria to break up. Senator, what's your take on that kind of statement coming from the Northern Elders Forum? Well, uh, Shil, thank you. The question we should ask ourselves, really, how did, we, how did we get to this level? If the Northern Elders are saying those Northerners who are outside, living outside the north, should come back home. And if you have people either in your state or in southwest saying people should leave their domain, then we have serious problems on our hands. And these are people that have lived together peacefully, cooperatively. There will be some cases of intermarriage among Nigerians. Like I said earlier, or your state it was a mini Nigeria. And so Everybody is expressing our collective frustration as a people. You know, if, if people who, who have, uh, have been living together are now saying uh, to thy tent, oh, thy Israel, then we have a problem. And this is when the gov government of this country must wake up at all levels. We must wake up, must wake up to ensure that we justify our mandate as a government. We must do the needful. Where we but need but Senator, to involve power. Like where we need to yeah. decentralize. No, 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 Senator, you are part yeah. of government. You are government as you're seated. You are a senator. You are in the National Assembly. So we're supposed to be telling you this. We're supposed to be asking you uh, the same question that you are throwing at us, that the government needs to do what they need to do. I mean, because people are dying every day. Um, what then do we need to, where do we, everybody seems to be confused. So the National Assembly has a responsibility, isn't it? Well, the National Assembly has a responsibility. And, of course, you are with the Constitutional Committee, I think, in Lagos or so. And this is why we are taking that item, particularly that item, as a very serious one. This is why we are looking at it, because unless we actually uh, decentralize the policing system, Unless we allow each communities and local, local government areas and each state to take responsibility for their, 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 their security situation, we will go continue to, to dance in, in cycle. So uh, the National Assembly is working. I've been discussing it. I've been talking about it. And this is why it's also on the front burner of this uh, current constitutional uh, review exercise. So uh, we, I hope that at the end of the day, uh, the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians, especially majority, majority of Nigerians, 
as far as this particular topic is concerned, will be met by the leadership of this country. So it's uh, something that we're looking at, and I'm sure it's something at this present. Just before I got to your studio, a friend of mine called me, and he was also talking, I was worried about the, situa the current situation. Then he told me that we're now sleeping into a busy state of nature. I said, we're already in a busy state of nature. We're not sleeping. Where life is brutally short and nasty, so we can't carry on like this. And so uh, the National Assembly, the executive arm of government, all government at all levels, we must come together and provide a solution. And if the, the constitutional amendment is the way to go to do it, why not? So this is my before, take on that. Briefly, yeah, briefly, Senator, because there is one more question I would like before I come to uh, Mr. Macri. Amoteku is active. That's what we hear and we know in Oyo State. Why did this attack happen and where is Amoteku? Because that's the question people will be asking. Well, Amoteku is working, like I said, Amoteku has been working even with the police. The, as, as a matter of fact, the situation would have been worse but for Amateko and other uh, local security outfits. Because from the report that I got, uh, the people that came to invade had more bigger plans than what happened. So it was the, uh, the uh, communities, the Amatekos and the local vigilante that were mobilized in the middle of the night, even though they were ambushed because they were not expecting them, that actually got uh, the, the, the mitigated the, the effect of the damage. And so Amateku is working, and now you know that the Southwest uh, governments are now saying that there will be joint patrol of the Amateku outfit across the entire Southwest. Well, may, let me also uh, say this. Uh, I'm aware that the Amateku uh, personnel uh, have, have, have uh, requested that the Inspector General of Police uh, grant them the license to also be well equipped. As we speak now, they are not as equipped as these invaders. All these right. people are savages. Mm. You know, they go on a rampage and they are vicious. They are vicious. They are savages. All so right. you can't allow a situation where you have a, a, security, a security network that is supposed to be working in collaboration with the police to carry a den gun. All right. So I, I think let me appeal to let me appeal to the IG. Uh, and the police and all the security agencies to please grant them the license to also be well equipped. Okay. As long as what they're doing is in support of what the police is also doing. We need to close now, but I, I'll, I'll allow you, Mr. Amakri, to give your final thoughts. But uh, there is another very important national matter, and that is the, uh, the, the suspension of Twitter. The EU, the Canada mission in Nigeria, the UK and the US, they all come together. They met with the foreign minister and they still came out to say, look, we still stand on the fact that it, it might be an undemocratic uh, move by the government of the day to suspend Twitter. And in fact, the, the, the regulator of broadcasting in, uh, in Nigeria is asking television stations to deactivate their Twitter handles. What's your, uh, in just 30 seconds, what's your reaction to that? Uh, well, I think um, that decision was taken in haste because uh, it shows that we still don't understand the youth population of this country. The youths. Because that's their language. That's where they communicate. And that's where they do their business. And if we don't understand it, you know, then we'll make a mistake. So, in fact, uh, maybe just before I enter this studio, I've seen uh, where they said that the government is going to uh, lift the ban on Twitter, but uh, Twitter must act responsibly. All right. Uh, Senator, we're out of time. We just have 15, but I'll allow you uh, to just uh, make a statement on that. Uh, what's your take on uh, NBC saying television station to deactivate their Twitter handles? Just in 20 seconds, please. Well, uh, well, I agree with the last speaker that the, that decision was uh, taken a haste. And, of course, you know that we have a very large youth population. And uh, they are uh, feeling very, very frustrated about this uh, decision. But I'm happy also that uh, I've also heard the fact that the government and the, uh, and the organizations are working together to resolve this lockdown. We can't afford not to have Twitter. Right. any other uh, social platforms such as Twitter in this country. So we Senator, have to work together. 
Senator Kolabo Logan, thank you so much indeed. It's a pleasure having you on the program tonight. And as always, Mr. Denis Amakri, our friend, thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you so much for having me. But that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Chino Kimbale. Bye-bye.